Hi everyone, this is Neil Reitertair, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for joining me in my latest video. I have another very interesting case for you of a patient who attended reporting a blocked left ear. This is their right ear you can see on screen right now. So they do have superficial otitis externa, uh, very medially into the ear canal, the, the skin was very dry. More laterally near the entrance, you may have seen a bit of macerated dead skin and that's because the patient admitted to getting water in the ear this morning. Or when I say this morning, the morning of the, the, the appointment day, I think they came a couple of days ago, and in an attempt to flush out their ears. Um, so their left ear, you can see this really impacted plug of wax and keratin and in the midsection of the ear canal they have quite a narrowing we call that anathemus and then the ear canal blooms back out again so i just used uh, my newly designed rye correct which has got a tapered tip and you can probably see that there the tip of it's quite tapered and you can see the angulation it's also curved and we're trying to get in and under and behind this plug but it's just too impacted and fortunately for me, um, my newly designed uh, Rye Epic came up trumps. But before we use that, this is um, my newly designed, uh, we're on a theme here, aren't we? Newly designed Rye Ear Hook. So it differs somewhat to the traditional ear hook, uh, St. Bart's ear hook I've been using in the past. And the main difference is the tip. You can see it's a bit more tapered, narrowed. Uh, that enables me not only to break up and chisel wax, uh, keratin just like I did here uh, which I'm now going to suction away uh, but it because it's tapered and narrowed it allows me to glide in between the wax and the canal wall a bit better so I've made it a bit of an improvement there but what's really going to come up trumps in a moment is the ear pick um, and it's really going to help now in my last video I mentioned that I've had a really interesting week uh, full of really quite severe and rare ear pathology and I think I mentioned that I've got a, a canal cholesterol toma video to upload and this patient actually um, has suspected uh, canal cholesterol toma but it's different to the one I initially mentioned so we can add this to the list so just in the last week alone I think I've seen three cases of otitis externa one otomycosis so that is a form of um, otitis externa but a fungal version where the other three were bacterial. I've seen a medial canal fibrosis, otherwise known as a, a false fundus. Um, two canal cholesterotomas, uh, one chronic superative otitis media, I think that's the one I uploaded the other day. Um, and which which of the ones have I uploaded or I've, I've come across? It's, it's just, it's just uh, past my mind, but it's been quite a week actually. Oh, um, Keratosis obtrans grade three, and I'm sure there's there's one more that I'm forgetting, but hopefully it'll come to me. So I will upload these all in the next um, week or so. So this is where the ear pick really helped. Um, I managed to leverage this plug of wax and keratin off the side canal walls. And just because of the low profile of the ear pick, and now I'm going to embed it into the plug and slowly drag this forward. You can see there's a bit of fluid there. Now, I don't know if that's a bit of discharge otorrhea or again, this patient had been getting water in the ear. And you can see how well the ear pick worked. Now with <coughs> the ear pick, because it's uh, tapered, you do have to be uh, careful when you're extracting, just like the ear hook in, in, in some respects, because you don't want that tip to be um, grazing the bottom of the ear canal or either the ear canal walls because uh, you will be causing some serious damage there. Now, you can see that it is quite wet and damp. And at this stage, there's nothing, doesn't look like anything untowards, but something's already crossed my mind. Um, at the floor of the ear canal, you can see there's almost a little white pimple, if you like. It's like a bit of raised skin. And whenever I see an ear like this, I'm very keen to, wherever possible just to try and remove this dead keratin so i want to know what's lurking underneath and when i upload some other videos this week um, of similar cases you'll see that sometimes you can find some really serious ear pathology hidden underneath blankets of dead skin and when you've got some dead skin what the skin does as it dies and decays it releases uh, lysosomal um, 
proteolytic enzymes and essentially these, these enzymes can start chewing away at flesh, skin and the underlying bone. So I'm just mopping up against the eardrums. There's a bit of discharge here or some water that the patient got in this morning that's mixed in with the wax. It just seems a bit sticky. So I'm just delicately approaching now. This patient near the end of the video suffered from a really, really uh, severe vertigo. Um, I'll explain why that was um, to the point where we had to stop the procedure. Fortunate enough, I was happy where, where, where we were in terms of the procedure. And uh, the patient's partner is actually a GP who, who I also treated on the same day and they attended and um, we uh, just need to get the patient out uh, to get some fresh air, sat him down and it's fine. Um, so I think what this video highlights is nothing, uh, earwax removal is not straightforward. Um, so for anyone who's performing earwax removal clinics, you're going to come across very serious pathology. You're going to come across... Um, kind of side effects of performing the procedure, um, such as in this case where the patient really suffered from bad vertigo. And that's due to the caloric effect uh, in this instance. So when you suction uh, the ear, you can uh, induce the caloric effect, which is whereby vacuuming the ear reduces the ear temperature and each ear has an organ of balance. They are uh, it's the vestibular system. You've got three semicircular canals. So when you're sat still and stationary, your brain is receiving equal messages from both organ, organs of balance. Um, but when you suction the ear, it reduces the ear temperature. And therefore, that organ of balance in that particular ear is sending less signals to the brain in comparison to the contralateral ear, the opposite ear, so in this case, the right side. So your brain then thinks you're moving to, on the, to the opposite direction, but you're not. And that then triggers uh, vertigo and your eyes start spinning around and your eyes are trying to correct your brain, trying to tell your brain, don't listen to your ears, listen to, uh, use my information from my eyes, from your eyes, because they're, they're telling the truth. Um, you, your ears are playing tricks with you and it takes about a minute or two for it to settle. So uh, I suspect uh, once the temperature of the ear returns back to normal, you, 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 you settle down. So it's a short term effect, but um, it can sometimes also lead to people to faint. I've had that a couple of times in the past as well. So now you can begin to see the canal wall at the bottom is quite inflamed. So you've got inflammation of the skin either side here and now you can start seeing a crack almost on the floor of the ear canal. And inside there you've got some keratin and you've got exposed bone, the yellow portion. Either side you've got inflamed skin and to the edge near the eardrum you've got some that's where the ulceration is the skin is lifted so this patient does need ent referral it may just be that this patient is very early stages of a possible canal cholesterol so stage one so um and it could just be now that i've removed this wax and, and that skin that this ear will settle down the skin will um realign itself and cover the floor of the ear canal. So we have written to the GP, uh, they're gonna need some obviously some medication here, some uh, anti-inflammatory steroids, some antibiotics, but I have strongly recommended they see ENT as soon as possible now. We've requested an NHS referral, but you're looking, even though I've mentioned that it could potentially be an urgent case of a canal cholesterol So that's when the patient suffered from vertigo, so I paused the procedure, but we were happy at that stage anyway. So I've provided the details of some private ENT consultants that I know, um, and hopefully this patient can be treated ASAP. Well, thank you for watching this video, guys. Do take care, keep well, and she'll speak soon. Bye-bye.